This is the maiden voyage for this sound system, so I want to be sure that everybody, I shouldn't say this, but my colleagues in physics said, are those the Bob Euchre seats? So I want to be sure that everybody up there can hear. Can? Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Warren Vanderhill, and it's my very great pleasure to welcome you today to the first all-university convocation in Ball State's recent history. I've always felt that ideally, there should be a meeting ground in institutions of higher learning for students, faculty, staff, administrators, and community friends, and have envied those universities where such a gathering was still possible. Now we have an arena large enough to have such a convocation, and I'm certain that you are as impressed by this new facility as I am. Through the ensuing years, we will all have the opportunity to enjoy athletic events in this arena, but there will be other kinds of events as well. Major speakers, concerts, commencements, and other ceremonial occasions. President Worthen and I thought it only fitting to begin academic 1992 for the second semester with an academic event open to everyone in the university community and to focus on one of the most important things that happens at a university, yet one that draws little publicity or fanfare. I'm speaking, of course, of institutional planning a process that has taken on new significance as Ball State looks to the year 2000. In my brief remarks today, I'd like to present an overview of planning in this university, its history, and then a word about our current planning activities. First, a look at where we have been, but with a caveat. I think we must remember that Ball State has always done planning, and I, for one, am grateful to the many persons who have so thought the future may be anticipated and described, and that this future may indeed be shaped by intelligent and informed action. Within the next year, Mr. Frank, I guidelines was issued to academic units. The fundamental purpose was reiterated to develop and facilitate a process in which the resources available for the academic missions of the university that everything was now fair game. Space, degree programs, personnel, public and professional service, student life, instructional resources, housing, university relations, and on and on. Every dean had some sort of planning advisory council and open forums were held throughout the campus. Planning had now become for the first time a grassroots effort. In the next few years, there were administrative changes involving presidents, vice presidents, and deans, and changes in responsibilities that affected planning directly. By this time, likewise, the vice presidents and directors of all major organizational units spoke on behalf of the goals and needs in their areas. An interesting variation of this procedure allowed for the formation for the first time of what were called self-determined units to present their case. With the approval of the promise, the group of individuals, how will we attract and retain outstanding faculty and other personnel? What kind of faculty and staff development programs should we have? In response to the need for strategies for the 90s, we believe that Ball State has now become a mature university, not just one on the way to becoming. And therefore, we have alternatives. As citizens of the ones to pay the price for the generations to come if we ignore this obligation. I suppose it's all rather risky, perhaps to some even a bit scary. It's been noted that Forrester's plan, planning really works, and let me give you a recent example. Two weeks ago, I received the final report from the Green Committee on Environmental Studies. Nine months ago, I had appointed this 14-member cross-disciplinary body to examine environmental concerns as they relate to the units. These might include a modification of our mission statement to reflect concern for environmental studies and the development of the Ball State campus as a model of environmental community by the year 2000. The committee's suggestions for capital investment could also have wisdom, and the way in which its members took the time to involve so many, many areas of the university community in their deliberations and in their final report. You'll be hearing more from the president. This important point of history we should be shaping. In the past, we won't want to take a short term. The question is,
balance. Because like the traditional scales, any additional weight on one side has the potential for destruction. The Wings campaign, of course, helped us move toward a balance in funding resources, adding funds from the private sector, number of internships available to students, and evolved at the successor university college program. Seven, it made progress toward our interdisciplinary university-wide objectives, wellness, internationalizing campus, and using telecommunications technology to enhance community learning. Thank you.